Hello everybody and welcome to the Learn Dota 2 League Season 17 Week 3. If you're seeing this game for the first time in two weeks because you're on the Black King Barbecue team, this is just what happens at the start of draft now. The replay like starts midway through for no obvious reason. We're taking a look at Black King Barbecue, the in the pool team, taking on the Split Push Sprouts, the code line team. With me here is the Dr. Dota Randy. Yes. So check out what happens. I don't know if Black King Barbecue is actually all together this week. That's uh that could be number one Frank Stan who changes their name every five minutes. Ten seconds remaining. Certainly not Roxy Roro on the split push sprouts. Five seconds remaining. Spearbreaker and DP, the first two picks here on the board. So, uh, so quickly were they picked that the replay started after they were already gone. Interesting, uh, band strategy on the Barticode line. Outside of the Primal Beast for number one Frank Stamp, presumably. Looking purely, excuse me, looking purely at, uh, in the pool here. Still looking purely at in the pool, just banning a lot of ones. Which I, uh, predict is going to be pretty common, perhaps, against the Black King barbecue lineup. On the other hand, in the pool seems to mostly be targeting Golden Dragon. An effort that paid off to the degree that Golden Dragon got a pick he wanted. Somehow did not pick a bat in here, which is pretty surprising to me. I feel like that is, you just always first pick a bat if you can. Like, there's not re really reason not to, and he can play the hero. But, you banned out a lot of Golden Dragon stuff. He's still got a hero that he actually wanted to play, which is not ideal. I guess there was also a decent amount of the support line picked off there as well. Mostly focusing on new couch day, I believe. Ten seconds remaining. Earth Shaker ban. Getting uh, JFK, that respect ban for Earth Shaker. And the code line Ricky ban comes out in response. Shots trading uh, broadside to broadside there. I don't think I'm that happy if I'm DP, seeing the Spirit Breaker come up. Or the Hoodwing, for that matter. Both pretty annoying heroes for the DP to deal with, reasonably. Both people that you're not going to be able to easily X to just easily run over an XO, both people that you're not even going to be able to easily silence. I mean, there's a decent possibility of silence and miss a lot in this game, which is not exactly what you want to have happen to you as DP. I mean, can uh, easily just life drain the Hoodwink out of existence if she uh, finds the Hoodwink outside of the trees, just in the middle of the lane, perhaps, but a little annoying, to say the least. Dire team pick. Witch doctor. The Witch Doctor be coming up, man. Doesn't look like a very good Witch Doctor game so far, not that it matters that much, but it's like... Doesn't do anything to either of these guys, and both of them could just easily interrupt the, the Death Ward, which is a little annoying. Five seconds remaining. In particular, Spirit Breaker, actually both of them, can interrupt the Death Ward without necessarily even committing to it. They can interrupt the Death Ward and also just do other things with that stun, which is a little annoying. I've already said that like three times. Okay, so they are going to pick the DP. Maybe it's going to be Death Prophet mid then, I guess. Amazing it got this far. Going to be picking up the Doom to follow. Doom and the Slark. Slark. <laughs> I like Slark against the bad, and I hate Doom against everybody on this team, basically. Hey Randy, fun fact about Doom, right? The, the ability Doom. You know what Doom never does anymore? Is break. Which means yes. that if you want to uh, stop Abaddon from automatically ulting, you now must Doom him and Hoodwink break him, or get like a Silver Age or something. Which is a lot of commitment to what is probably a pause 3. Slark's really good against Abaddon, but he's not too great against the DP. 
not much of a winner against the Witch Doctor. I mean, he can ignore the Amaladic sometimes, but if he's in front of a Death Ward, he just dies in like a half second, or has to pop ult in like a half second. That's not a position you want to be in as Slark. You don't want to be in a place as Slark where a support can make you ult just like that, right? Like, because that's going to happen at the top of every fight, which means if things go tits up for Slark, he's not going to have that many escape options. Lich coming out here. Which is not going to be bad in any game, and this does not look like, uh... This does not look like no game to me, so... Which is probably going to be pretty decent here. Doom certainly has his fair share of targets to look at, if nothing else. You know, everybody except a Abaddon is a very good Doom target, and if you want to drop the break on him, I guess a Abaddon's pretty good, too. I don't know if I'm happy with doing supports, but I guess you can. Well, it's less about doing supports, it's more about doing the Death Prophet, really. Dire team pick. It's more about doing the Death Prophet, and if you need to, you can do the supports, and more importantly, once you get Ags, which I hope you're buying, once you get Ags, you're dooming all the supports, and that has very high impact in a game that looks like this. Everybody just sitting there silenced is a pretty rough state of affairs. Radiant team pick. Juggernaut. Juggernaut, huh? That's another very good this Doom target that's a little worrying. Oh, okay. It's a pretty decent looking Ember Spirit game outside of the fact that you're going to unintentionally be popping a uh, bad ult. So I'm not popping, but feeding into the Abaddon ult sometimes. That's an ugly Abaddon set. What do you make of these rats, Randy? I mean... Ember's supposed to be good, I guess. This looks like such uh, a good okay. Doom game. This is just five good Doom... Well, four and a half good Doom targets, really. I mean, I don't know, they're... Dragon Slark is questionable, but you could probably just wait out his ult, I guess. Hopefully. Well, hypothetically you could anyway. It's going to be a little harder if you can't spin or Omni slash anybody. Probably, if you're doomed, yeah, and then you're just going to die. And uh, speaking of people who are just going to die, they get doomed. If the Death Prophet gets doomed before the start of the fight. Now, I should clarify, if the X is already out, Doom is useless. Doesn't do anything. But if the Doom comes out before the Exo does, if Doom gets the drop and gets that Doom off, then DP is, like, actually useless, just has to leave. Looks like a very good Doom game. Slark's kind of hit or miss. Like I said, the big, the biggest problem for the Slark this game is that Witch Doctor is going to be able to make him ult. You don't like to be in that position where a support can do that for you, right? Well, the good news is, is that outside of that, I mean, it's not bad for him. Pretty good into the Lich, pretty good into the, uh... Into the Abaddon. Prepare Doesn't really have anything to worry about when it comes to the Death Prophet, I mean. It's gonna be... It's one of the easier things to Dark Pact off, that Death Prophet silence, because it's it moves somewhat slowly. So you can probably see it coming. Oh, In the Pool is sponsored by Eating. That's a big sponsor right there. And that is number one Frank Stan indeed on uh, Black King Barbecue. Which uh, about half of the members are uh, rocking the, the team label for. Ohio Turnpike is not, and we'll be flamed for this after the game. Except in fairness, I think I heard from him less than last week, and he didn't know how to do that, so, you know. <laughs> yes. You remember Reeves? Yeah, I remember him. What a sad, sad day to be alive. What, what do you mean? What happened to Reeves? Got kicked off Dota Center. What do you mean? Well, so yeah, I mean, he did. But... Three. The way you put it makes it sound like, uh. <laughs> he killed... died or something. Yeah. No. No, he's, he's alive. I'm he killed sure. somebody or died, yeah. 
Code Lion team kind of splits on the rooms there. I think they kind of lose their nerve, and uh, as a result, do not get the three that they could have gotten there. As everyone awkwardly walks the lane, or if you're Spirit Breaker, awkwardly kind of walks around north of the lane. Seems like it's a good time to uh, go down the roll call here. So, for Black King Barbecue, pause one, you've got In the Pool, captain of the team on the Slark. Pause two, you've got Kick Slide on the Ember Spirit. Pause three, you've got number one Frank Stan, also known as Jill, also known as Kim Wexler Gaming, also known as Doom, and about 15 other things. Pause four, you've got Sculpture three on the Hoodwink, and pause five. Okay, Juggernaut getting a little run over here. Okay, and pause five, you've got Ohio Turnpike, also known as John Fortnite Kennedy, also known as his real name, said right out loud over the air, Ron Burgundy style, Ignite. on the Spear Breaker. Meanwhile, on the split push sprouts, pause one, also captain of the team, code line on the juggernaut, who uh, has just missed a last hit and a deny trying to chase that out. Hopefully he learned a valuable lesson for that. Pause two, you've got Kenny Lavender on the Death Prophet. Pause three, Golden Dragon on the How Did This Not Get Banned Abaddon. Pause four, you've got Pages, who's sponsored by Dre. Pages by Dre on the Lich. And pause five, you've got New Couch Day standing in for Roxy Row Row on the Witch Doctor. New Couch Day, a uh, name I'm sure some of you have not heard in uh, quite a long time. Was uh, in this league for a very long time, I actually think. Oh, Juggernaut turned on his axe. Actually signed up a couple of seasons ago, it didn't make it in time though. But uh, LD2L Classic making his return here to uh, stand in. Ember Spirit was flicking his Zippo there. I don't know if you heard that. That's disgusting, so we're not going to look at it anymore. Death Prophet currently is pretty much owning the Ember Spirit at mid. I haven't really considered the ramifications of that so far. What do you think of that matchup, Randy? Uh... I mean, usually Ember hates range heroes, so it kind of makes sense, I guess. Yeah. But I think... Yeah, Death Prophet's not really a range hero for the most part. Yeah. Has been well, she has reach, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, she does have the reach. I do think this is one of those things where it kind of starts bad for Ember, but it gradually gets better as things go on. Of course, you would... Both of these heroes are probably not going to be in this lane that long. This is definitely one of these two guys who leave at level 6 type lane, so there's that. That element of it. So far, perhaps unsurprisingly, Kenny Lavender, the only member of the Dire team that's uh, up there on the last hits chart. This could be... Okay, I was about to say this could be. It can't be. Probably? Okay, yeah. Abaddon, no boots. No boots, no kill potential on Slark unless he gives it to you. Especially not with this Spirit Breaker here. Spirit Breaker here who's able to, uh, okay, let's take a look at that happening. No, a new couch day. Just stubbornly goes through a lot of resources to drain to keep himself alive. Wastes a lot of time on the main while. Does get the Maledict off on Doom. Doom uses the, uh, uh, code line. Code line, my friend! You spin the Maledict! That much is certain, but you don't do that, line. Clark, uh, on the other hand, though, kind of overscathes his welcome here in the land. Loses a long war of attrition. Good fear on the part of the Lich. The Spirit Breaker does not buy into a Baton's nonsense. Oh, it is going to die for that. Spirit Breaker does not buy into a Baton's nonsense and actually stays and gets the job done before going down himself, which is definitely a worthwhile trade, for the record. As in the pool comes back to a minute of casually free farming against the support. Baton's not that much longer. 
So he gets to do that much before anybody even looks at him. Look at this ward here. That's a goofy looking ward, Randy. Do you think the uh, do you think the the radiant might be affected by the goofiness of their ward? Is that my ward? I don't know what ward they use. Yeah, I know. I, I don't never, either. Never, I never placed a ward in my life. But somehow you've played support. I don't play support. I play caster. Yeah, there we go. Sark is kind of overstaying his welcome again here. He's actually going to do the job this time, though, just barely. That Accursive of Avernus had actually gotten off. That Slark is very dead, and he's still pretty low as it stands. He's going to have to shoot through a lot of region to, uh, to actually be able to stay here. It's not great. You don't want to be going through so much region like this. The good news is, is Abaddon has just TP'd. That was Abaddon's TP death, so now he has to take the walk of shame back to lane, so Abaddon is also going to be wasting a lot of time in kind. Kenny Lavender bottled an Invis rune. Code line cut down the, <laughs> the tree. It's kind of funny. If you think about it, lore-wise, that's like the most efficient thing to do against Hoodwink, is that when she plants that tree, you just cut it down, just piss her yeah, off. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. oh. getting walked all over here. It was a very rough lane for him. Shruff, even in, uh... Even logically, it's not just because it's a lion. So put your pitchforks away. Amber Spirit, um... Do you remember that thing I said earlier about Ember Spirit getting out of here at level 6? Well, Ember didn't. She takes the first XO and dies. Very casually. Yep. Spirit Breaker is here to 10 things until Kick Slide gets back. Spirit Breaker has not yet. Charged out of his lane a single time, for good or for ill. Which, I mean, makes sense so far. The two, the, the kills that have been happening at top lane have been so given and so guaranteed that it's uh, hard to argue that the Spirit Breaker would add anything. But like this, this could be a very good time for running, right? Like, especially coming from mid. Need to be either paying attention on the Spirit Breaker, who's using League of Legends camera, or you need to be calling this if you're one of these two guys up here. You know, you see this, uh, see this happening. Luckily, in this specific case, it doesn't look terribly like, uh, okay, no, it is gonna matter. Hoodwink's not gonna come with, and the kills are gonna happen. Good news is, is that at bot lane, uh, maybe even due to Spear Breaker staying there, they got another kill on the Abad, and Lich was not present to see that happen. Went to the Wisdom Rune, and Abad died. Good news is, DP is an entire level above the Ember Spear right now. Probably due to that whole, you know, getting casually killed by the, uh, the XO thing. They're gonna make a, they're gonna make an attempt on our life here. I think the anticipated, the Spirit Breaker coming, yeah, cause the Lich has rotated here as well. That oh, ult just bounced to creeps. Okay, no, it is going to get rid of the uh, Spirit Breaker there. JFK wins Luckiest Man in America award as Lion dies again top. Okay. Doom now has his sure. uh, skill. <laughs> yeah, this, skill, this lane is rough for Jug, but I think uh, Lion's... Unfortunately, once again, Lion's lack of a survival instinct might be holding him back here. Should not be this bad. Should not be this bad. I actually want to take a look and see if it's fair to, 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 to get on him for this. Oh no, he just did the exact same thing Reedy was doing, I think? Just looking for the Lotus and got run over. Again, well. So no, it's eight minutes, so probably not. I don't know, I was just in a weird spot and died. If you're down already, it's a hard thing to stand on if you're the Juggernaut. Like, you cannot... You cannot let that happen to you, I don't think. You know, Warcarp can get away with being somewhere weird and dying sometimes, but he's uh, he's not playing Jug, you know what I'm saying? 
Got the mid hero. Or mid player, I guess. Yep. Ben is uh, taking some risky trades here. It's completely out of man. He does have a Lotus. So there's the good news. Oh, swing and a miss by Hoodwink. That's very sad. Why did Hoodwink pick the Grimstroke this game, actually, thinking you about it? Are doomed. It's double doom, isn't it? Very odd. Oh well. Not like he's gonna be too sad to see that. Doom just runs over the jug as Witch Doctor has to route, and Kenny Lavender gets cut up in the 1v3. Pages D wards at bot while this is happening. Batten is now level 6. So. He is not as scared as he could be. Anymore. At least for the moment. He can now take those scary trades with Slark. He just better get something done with it, or else he's just gonna lose all of his Agi and die the second his ult gets done. Your death is kinda approaching here. Doom is coming in from behind the uh, the T1. Gunwing gives out of things to do. Inaugural oh, Omni Slash. Do any damage, absolutely though. nothing. Doom doesn't have a creep skill. Crit, 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 crit. Okay. No. <laughs> Not a single time. Guess that's what happens when you have one. It. Okay, a single time then. It just, do, it just doesn't do any damage. Very unfortunate turn of affairs for the Juggernaut there, but. Doom, eat a goddamn jungle creep. Please. Thank you. That is not even scary if you have the centaur stomp, if you have the mana break, if you have anything, really. I don't think you can add the centaur stomp with level one, uh, level one eaten. Your eaten? Your devour is only level one. Fascinating. Going all in on that Scorched Earth wants to uh, turn from Doom to Zoom, I guess. Okay, well, well, I was going to say, suddenly looks good for Batten, and then Slark had uh, Death Pack there at a very good time. Eats a Mist Coil for like two damage, because level one Mist Coil does uh, very little, unfortunately. Going for the quick Echo here. Ember Spirit is a bit unfortunately placed in all of this. He kind of. Came bot to try and counterattack there, but found nothing to do. Okay, well, you remember what I was talking about earlier with that whole DP and EXO thing? That just okay. happened. Oh. Ultimate sacrifice. Casual wicked sick doom. Yeah, for all the flame, no pun intended, I gave the, uh, the zoom build here. It's certainly working out so far. I think, uh, again, no pun intended, it may be difficult, uh, having completely abstained from devouring to carry the momentum very far, but certainly has started out very strong here. And it's not Kenny Lavender, you can't do that. And speaking of things you can't do, you can't do this. Through the Spirit Breaker, just TPs into lots of pain. Amber Spirit follows. That was a good idea for a Lich Hole, but uh, sadly, Paige just forgot that the Ember Spirit is like one of those spirits. Golden Dragon stops to put a Photic Shield on and so misses out on his opportunity to get the Silence on the Ember. Clark Ult is just going to take him out. Hoodwink just shoots him in the face. Ember... Looked like he was in a bad spot here. Now looks like he's in a prime spot to clean up. The Fusel Blade comes out on the... Uh, on the Lich, and just gets rid of him. And now we must ask ourselves what we learned. What we learned is that if you look at the net worth chart, it's not looking pretty so far for Dyer. Slash! That was something, I guess. Man. He's too fast. 
You were flaming this guy's build? Come on. You got a blink dagger. Ah, I get it. Flaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's good. Hey, I'm Varanus with level 4 Devour. You, uh. Oh, they don't give you the magic resist on that anymore. Never mind. <laughs> no, you get the bonus armor, so with level 4 Devour, you know, would have survived the Omni Slash better. And would not have needed it to begin with. There you go. Again, the Sark being very frustrating with his with the use of the dark pack there has been flummoxing them constantly. The DP is here for the Exo. The Acorn came in for them at a very awkward time. So they're likely to uh, only really get the spear break with it. Van does not have ult. Okay. That was a lot of damage that just hit Sark so fast though. Glitch ult is no, coming. Glitch ult. Oh man. Doom is showing up for this. Witch Doctor just recovered like half his HP. Completely useless Doom on the uh, Death Prophet who's already exoing and therefore uh, Doom dies. Okay. Can't do that, guys. That may have been a mistake. You got that right. Oh, then I was about to I was about to get on Radiant's case for getting overconfident about that, but Kenny Lavender almost died at her tower, so JFK inexplicably stopping his uh, charge there. And an awkward position. He doesn't even get the Lotus. In fact, he is going to die because he tried to do that. You may be a Spirit Breaker, but you cannot walk in front of five guys like that. Gotta be watching that map, buddy. Not when they have so many sluns and slows and silences, and so... Uh... Very easy game to get in. It's pretty hard to get out. Slark looking at uh, an Ags Rush here, which is something, I guess. I don't know if I'm. What, what do you think, Randy? About what? Sorry, I zoned out. Slark is rushing Ags. Yeah, I think that's what all, all Slarks do. Okay. Is it still that pouncing? Yes. Yeah, that's what that's what Slurk does. Doom is uh, dead again. It's like pretty core on this hero. Before anything else, though, like you guys stiffy into eggs? Is that what you oh. do? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll Diffy's trust you. I'll trust you on that. It sounds not great to me, but okay. Let's see, Pro Tracker. I'll uh, I'll, I'll consult the books. You're cooking the books, Randy. See, I gave it to you. I was like, I'll trust your judgment on that. And you're like, no, I won't let you trust my judgment. Uh, I won't. I'll bolster my judgment. There we go. Diffie, Mage Slayer, Eggs. Eh, we're only missing one part of that puzzle. And just got his okay. Don't don't mist coil. You actually silence him if you don't mist coil there. Very good, uh, Death Lord. In the pool, you are getting crazy there. That was way overconfident. Okay, Doom beat the EXO this time. So very good. New couch day is like uh, sorry, DP. Oh, the cask. The cask is so annoying. He will die for it, so, he does save DB's life. So irritating. Yeah, they guaranteed get DB if not for that cask. Nothing else, they clean this up. Clean up the uh, guys here and are gonna get this tower, but for losing Slark, you're not that happy about that, I don't think. Bimba Spirit flicks Zippo. He's got his mage slayer, you know, Slark's just not getting his, because uh, Ember has one. The buff doesn't stack, it does make sense. Bounty. And he did indeed get to Ags without really substantially... Okay, he did die once for it, that is pretty rough as Slark, but... Without substantially paying for it, so there's that. Man, that's annoying. What is Spearbreaker doing? Charging creep, okay. So we're breaking going for the Shadow Blade here, has uh 
multiple parts of the bongo boots already. Doom is entranced by an illusion rune. She is going to go to Ember Spirit. I just got Ags like one more camp. Doom, okay, Doom finally has a skill. It's the uh, the wolf crits. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It's a bad thing to have. You're very confident. You're right click, and if you've got a spirit breaker, an ember, an ember spirit, and a slark, I suppose no reason not to be. Even Hoodwink is going to be doing a little bit of right clicking in these fights. Even Hoodwink is going to be getting chased down by the Death Prophet. Ember Spirit. Into an awkward spot. Is going to lodge his protest and be done with it. it is there some Ember set that makes that sound play whenever he does literally anything? Is that a weird glitch or oh, what? Punk. Or maybe, I don't know. Uh, okay. it's, it's making the chain sounds, but he's not doing it. Well, I don't know. I can't hear very well. Turn your ears on. Exo just gets the support. Does not get that much done. Spear Breaker. Charging in, the okay. pentagram comes out. Pentagram might be a mistake. You know she has no Exo. You probably should not doom that. The uh, witch old, the witch doctor old does get ulted, but a little too little, a little too late. Slark coming into the back. So crazy. Back line. Yeah, this lich is crazy. You got that right. <laughs> the break comes out on a bad injustice. He he uh, manually casts the ult, which means if he was doomed, he would have been screwed. What a play. Miscue there on the part of the Doom, unfortunately, at the start of that fight. Dropping the Doom on the Death Prophet, who is already ulted, rather than uh, one of her f friendly teammates. I mean, I know you were flaming Doom the support, but, like, you know, that fight goes very differently. Uh, the Witch Doctor gets doomed, you know? Do it, the Witch Doctor, the I'm Lich. Flaming, gets I'm flaming being in the position where you have to do it, I guess. There you go. I mean, that wasn't being in a position where you had to have done it, it's just being in a position where you would have rather done it, I think is a better way to put it. You could also do the Abaddon yeah, I mean, there if you were willing to drop the Hoodwink ult, that was also a correct move, so there's that. Like, all the Lich, all the Lich spells are on point, the Wish Shocker is kind of also there, I, yeah, I don't know. New Catch Day Slander? That much, but... No, the, the Death Ward definitely did a lot throw, of that yeah. fight. It killed one, almost killed a second, and they had to drop Spirit Breaker all to put it out. Not sure what happened to that on me. Yeah, it just got eaten by uh, by a lot of creeps and oh, no. bouncing around everywhere by Witch Doctor. My Jug does no damage. My Jug is dead. My Jug needs to farm. Yeah, my Jug should not be here right now, like at all. In fairness, I don't think he expected in the slightest the whole enemy team was going to be here, but he definitely should have pulled out well in advance of, uh, of this. And I mean, if you don't know if the enemy team is all going to be there or not, there's a very easy solution to that. Don't be there. You know. If you can't be at least somewhat confident, don't be there. Yeah, as a pause one player, there's, a, there's constantly like a gauge in your head. That says, okay, what's the percentage chance that I get some, that I both get something more than just farming a wave out of this, and I don't die for it. And unless that chance is 65% or above, you don't go. Even 65 is a little generous for this point. Exo comes out in advance of the Doom. Doom, wisely this time, knows it's no benefit to drop it right now. And they back up. This is good play on the part of the uh, Raiden here. They're wasting an entire EXO and can easily just uh, come back in after it's done. Unfortunately, no such uh, benefit for his Culture 3 Scarrier, which was accidentally left in the middle of a lane on Micro. And Abaddon will now lose like half his HP. Good shot in theory. Almost got the blind shot there on an Invis target since so that. No Doom. Not, not, not her. No doom that guy! Doom! <laughs> doom! It's fine. Doom, the don't doom that guy. Ben is not gonna have ult for it this time. 
That prophet is still doing okay at the back here. Lork is kind of carrying this fight at the moment. Yeah, it's turning out to be fine. They don't have any great answers to this Lark Jug. Thank God somebody screamed in Jug's ears and Warrior, told him not no to, vision. Not to uh, TP into that, because that would have been slightly disastrous, to say the least. Not like that wasn't already slightly disastrous. You had, like, the worst possible doom. On the well, worst the possible disastrous rather yeah. than slightly disastrous. Well, all I was going to say is, like, the real disaster there isn't just losing four. I mean, that's pretty bad. The real disaster there, for, in my eyes, is that Doom, dar Doom targeted, like, the worst possible Doom target, and they still won that fight four for one. Like, the Doom was almost wasted, and it still almost worked out. Speaking of Doom, the Doom and the Spirit Breaker, looking for, uh, looking for Code Line here at the top lane. Code Line's going to say, uh, Omni Slash. Sculpture misses the net, does not realize Code Line is quite this crazy, but all good things do come to an end, including uh, Lich and Line's lives. Baden. Oh, buddy. So it's, it's something... It Like, this is not an overwhelmingly bad game for this team, right? I mean, they only just started falling down. There's something about the way Golden Dragon farms, though. It just feels like he's perpetually behind. Like, I know Baden in this game should not be barely above net support net worth, right? Like, it doesn't feel like to me, anyway. Maybe I'll try to keep a half an eye on him to see exactly where it's coming from. I mean, we're looking at him right now. Okay, never mind. That was almost a cool Doom, but sadly the Exo is available this time. Uh, Sark? Oh no. The creeps! The creeps! No! <laughs> wow! They triple bounce to him. Yikes. Slark wins luckiest man award. A hypothetically good go there, but again, just went into EXO. Cannot go into EXO with this team. Wouldn't have been bad if all you lost for was a Spirit Breaker, and in fairness, he could not have known that Slark would have <laughs> just had the unluckiest thing in the world happen to him, but... Very rough. Very rough stuff. Doom, Doom going for the BKB here. Yeah, I'm a little... We'll tap it on it, honestly. Oh, I don't think it really does yeah, enough. Slark is also weighing it, so... I'm a little less tepid on... Well, no, I'm still a little tepid on Slark buying it at this juncture, but Doom, I'm uh, no. far more tepid. I would, I would buy BKB after that last fight, too. I'm not even True! Sure. I mean, the real problem is this. BKB stops Maledict, stops the Lich nonsense, it stops Curse of Avernus, and I guess it stops the DP silence. But if DP has gotten more than one spell off in a fight, you've already, you've already, you've already blown it. If you're Doom, you really want to get her before she does anything, right? It's not. Uh, it's like quantifiably, it's a lot of stuff there, but it just doesn't feel like quantifiably a lot of stuff Doom should be worried about. It's like the Maledict and the, uh, and the Silence, that's about it. And the real, uh, the real, the real article is what you're not stopping, or in fact, harming in any way. The Death Prophet Exo, the Juggernaut Ult, the, uh, Witch Doctor Death Ward. It does nothing to any of those things, and this Death Ward has been owning. In fairness, I don't think it should have been owning. I do think there is a good degree to which uh, Radiant Team is kind of letting themselves down, not stopping it earlier, having to use the Doom on it. It hurts a little bit. There was one fight where it would have been the very cool option, but he has been owning with it, right? And does not do anything to stop that. And Doom agrees and has gone for an Orchid instead, which I think is a much more elegant solution to this problem. But I mean, really, what you want is Ags. If you want to, if you want to stop people from using spells on you, get Ags. Promise you, it works out better that way. Patton also going for BKB Uber cursed. That is 
that's a real mystery. The BKB stops almost nothing on this team. It is the Hoodwink net, and that's it. That's uh, quite a little bit to get BKB on. I mean, it also stops the Slark Pounds, but you shouldn't have to care about that. Especially when you're so far behind, I don't know. A lot of BKBs I'm not liking, a lot of Roches that I like them doing at least. I think uh, they might be getting a little antsy about the prospect, but they're not going to be done in time to stop it. Code Line takes the Aegis, which I guess makes sense because both of his other heroes are kind of walking ults that are done in one life anyway. I mean, they kind of all are, really. This is just not, unfortunately, a great Aegis lineup. All three of these heroes, uh, all the core lineup. Kind of I mean, one. If Joe, if Joe got items, then he would be a good Aegis carrier. There but... you go. I mean, he has Maelstrom and Yasha. That's uh, pretty good in line terms. In fact, I think oh, he wow, just finished bro. Manta. Come on, dude. It's not nice. So I got BKB. <laughs> And indeed, yeah, he's got uh, Maelstrom Manta. It's not bad for line terms, which, I mean, sounds like incredible play, but the real politic is, is this guy is learning pause one. He has not been farming very effectively or efficiently in most games. and Well, he's not doing great in this one. He is doing noticeably better than usual, which is good. The Abaddon, I still don't know why he's so far behind, but... Well, I do kind of know why he's so far behind, is that he's buying an item that doesn't help him at all, but... Besides that... Just use the Hoodwing Net, dude. Don't buy the BKB in this game, it literally doesn't do anything. It doesn't stop this, doesn't stop, like, anything you care about that this guy can do. Doesn't stop, uh, much of this. I mean, this guy gets one item and suddenly might as well don't have it. Sark uh, panics and hits both his shard and his ult on the same spot. I guess he's trying to smokescreen his movements there. No! The fake Juggernaut just got rid of Atos. Who the hell has that? Who has that? What the hell? Oh, it's Hoodwink. Hoodwink just Atos one of the fake jugs. Nice. Easy. Death Prophet here, posturing very aggressively. You're Spirit Breaker, and you're in this kind of trouble? You don't wait for them to come to you. You look at the creep that Doom is beating up, you charge to it. Exo just dropped Raw on the T2 here. Just looking to push. Nothing to bad in a DP. You're certainly not going to be seeing any shortage of that. Lincoln's went out, or Lincoln's popped on the Rod of Atos there. Probably not necessarily what DP wanted to get Lincoln stopped, but you do have a bad for situations like this, so there's that. Hoodwink gets melted. Ember Spirit uh, throws the chains, the Ember Spirit skips town. Where's Slark right now? Slark, no. No, buddy. No, 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 no. Doom is here split-pushing this T2 mid, and my Slark is running around in circles behind the line here. This is a little backwards, Phil. I must be honest with you. Flitch ult is going to spell the death of the uh, Spirit Breaker. Or, kind of Doom's problem, right? Like, Doom should be here, I feel like. Yeah. Once again, it's Doom in the not... DP. This is dead. Doing the DP and buddy, that was a big risk. DP has uh, Lincoln's. Aegis is no, dead the and then Slark jumps into a death ward. That is a very casual death. Ember Spirit not watching his Manta soon follows. Randy? Randy, uh, I think it's. It's not looking very good for Black King Barbecue right now. 
Not particularly, no. It's like... The Juggernaut is still quite far oh, behind. Maybe. So they're only up Maybe we're now. working in front of BKB, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm the Slurk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I gotta agree with that. I mean, I feel like... I, I know why he, feel like he feels like he needs BKB, but... I don't know, he could probably greed and go Orchid this game. Yeah, it just doesn't do enough. Speaking of Orchid, Orchid coming out there from... Uh, from who exactly? That's a great my, question. My jug. My jug? Okay. My jug has orchid. All right. This is sure, what Sark should be building. Aside <laughs> from the milk, I guess. Good wink by in time here. Okay, I guess jug has orchid. Whatever. Doom. Everybody on Radiant Posturing very aggressively here. Abaddon, no ult for 16. Is this going to have to skip down Slark? It's BKB'd in the midst of all this. He's still taking attrition. Going to kill the supports. Silence out on him. Silence! He's dead! They shocked oh, him so hard with that silence. On the slash on the Doom. There's no damage, but it's enough to get the job anyway. Uh, Randy. Work it out on the, uh, on the, the hoodwink. Abaddon, please, please aphotic shield people who are Rod of Atost. My, uh, Slark is spending a lot of time in the dirt right now. His friends are, uh, doing a good job trying to buy some space, buy some time, but, uh... Exo is not going to be up anytime soon. That's the perhaps the sole bit of good news in the uh, in the the news today for in the pool team. Spear Breaker going a little crazy on this charge. Spear Breaker going a little dead on this charge. Oh my God! This coconut! Oh my God! This coconut! Why would you silence the hoodwink and not the Ember Spirit? Battle really awkward. Doesn't benefit him at all. Slark is back up. These guys now have to make a retreat. Living without Exo, they just, you know, killed most of that T3. So I can't imagine they're too sad about that. Which doctor only wants one. Never mind. He just wanted to. He just wanted to have two lines play in in ch in chat. That's what's uh, going on here. Code Line is uh, baffled by the fact that he actually has more money than he knows what to do with. Second place in the net worth chart. It's not very nice. <laughs> it's true. This is the first time since being a pause one in this league that but, he's been in that it's situation. A, it's a weird drug build, I won't let you. Yeah, but you can say that. Working. Swift Blank coming out next. I heard uh, I heard some flame on this guy that he uh, he was doing basically the same build on Drow. He like he got Dragon Lance and then he got Orchid and he got Orchid at 35 minutes. And uh, some why? Was why is, who's who's proposing this Orchid on every carry build? What a good question. Ben going for a Skull Basher. And if it wins, I can't shit talk it, you know. There you go. Ben going for Basher here, which is pretty good, honestly. I should have, I should have bought Orchid against Princess. True. Honestly, with how limited the utility of the um, of the uh, BKB is in this game, probably should have gotten it a little bit earlier. I mean, he's down to the seven seconds already. I don't think he's actually used it to block a single spell. I don't think anything would even be feasibly casted on him so far. Roche once again going to be going down here. Radiant know this. He had the Roche roar and everything, but Radiant are not really in a position to do much about it. They're going to scan it anyway. Just for posterity, I guess. Oh my god, that would have been so sick. I could see the, I could see that playing and kick slide set, dude. I know. It almost worked. He didn't die. Yeah. Yet. 
He didn't die, and he actually got most of Jug's first life done. He uh, got them to pop Exo as well, well before it's actually useful for doing anything, assuming he lives. Yeah, so he got them to waste Exo, too. So even though he didn't get the Aegis, it's still a job well done, and JFK has learned the secret technique of just charge somewhere that's not here, which is nice. And Ember Spirit is now going to be a thorn in their side by uh, showing up here with the Doom to uh, split on this tower while Dyer takes out their own T2. It's the right play for Ember Spirit at this juncture. Where's my Slark at? Okay, he's, warm, he's walking around farming area, so he's not uh, disappointing us. JFK, forgot you can't do this. And just... Um, Wait, we're coming back to defend this, right? Right, right? We're, we're coming back to defend this, right? Okay. Glyph comes out after the tower is dead, just like you like to see. Orchid is coming out. That was an Omni Slash that hit literally just a couple of catapults over and over and didn't even kill those somehow. And it matters not, because they're going to get the uh, buildings anyway. Abaddon eats the cheese when he had all. Okay, Abaddon. Everybody is like, oh wait, yeah, we have. Th there's this guy, isn't there? Everybody kind of forgets they had Jug until he was uh, halfway dead, and then they go, whoops. That's uh. Oh my god. The the radiant or the dire just left their their uh, son at soccer practice basically, <laughs> and now they're gonna be paying for it a little bit, losing three on their retreat. Oh, get buildings and die. Yep. The American classic. Tribute to my house. Man's taking tribute. Pulling out a skull basher. The rule of regeneration. Oh, he's so dispersed. I assume that was probably Slark, yep. Slark got his Disperser and hit it before there was actually anything to Disperse. And that better not have been what I thought it was. Okay, good, it was just Orchid. Guess that's what the Orchid is probably for, is uh, as much to get more silence out as it is to pop the Lincolns on, uh, on the DP here. So Rax gets traded for Rax. Dyer still one racks up. They still have the uh, the top lane of Radiance racks taken care of. And the BKB comes out. I'm still just as tepid on it as before. Come on, guys. Please only build BKB in games where it actually blocks things. <laughs> like, if you want to... If you want to be funny about, like, Orchids and what have you, just build, like, a... Build a Lotus Orb. Which makes you completely unappealing to do that to and also has a self-purge. Tormentor comes out, gets the uh, shard out for Abaddon. Let's see if he uh, remembers he has it. Some Abaddons are kind of bad about that. He has some excess money to spend. 2k, almost 3 grand in his pocket. Really should be looking at uh, putting that money towards something. If I had to make a recommendation, AC is always nice. Manta style also could be very good in this game. Excuse me, you'd have a very obvious insta silence target in the form of the Ember Spirit. I do think it is the best kept secret of a bad history that you do not actually have to buy a Manta to have a good game. Well, this is uh, one of these games where it's not bad. It's not bad in a Slark either. And it can stop, uh, stop a Doom potentially once in a while. Oh, this is... Uh, Witch Doctor is making this very frustrating. These two guys are just kind of sitting here. Okay, I don't think that needed a Witch Doctor ult. That was a bit of a waste of Death Ward, just as that was a bit of a waste of BKB. Alright. That was a bit awkward. Once again, I think a uh, bit of over-eagerness showing on the part of the Dire here. 
a lot of resources to get a pretty objectively low value member of the Radiant, and then they chase around the Ember Spirit for a minute and accomplish nothing. Perhaps this is a symptom of uh, the Lion Team not being in the winner's seat, winner's circle very much so far this season. This is very good to go. Oh my god, that Yule's. You better have that goddamn Yule Scepter, dude. Okay, good, he does. Oh man, that was that that was gonna be uh He the doesn't flame have works. a Yule Scepter! He does have a Yule Scepter. He has a Yule Scepter! Man getting bullied uh behind the lines here, but he still has his ult. Chain Frost! Yeah, another Everybody big chain frost. Dead. And in combination with the uh, oh mistimed the stun there. That in combination with the uh the death ward there. The Death War, the Voodoo Switcheroo, is going to be enough to get rid of the uh, Ember Spirit, get rid of the Slark. Ember's going to buy back. At this point, I think Ember Spirit and Co. might be genuinely just hoping that the Dire just get demoralized and leave. They don't really have anything to actually do here. Dog needs to be a little bit careful to not randomly spill, but you know. Pops the uh, orchid there. Perhaps uh, just trying to make absolute sure that. Um, okay, Abaddon, please. Oh, wait, Abaddon's dead. Never mind. Never mind. Cancel that flame. Mega creeps. Good use of the uh, silence there, but Witch Doctor and the Death Prophet are doing a little very good job. Keeping order in the front and the back of the lines, respectively. He's about to pop! No, he's gonna be fine, actually. And the pool team has not been watching replay casts, I don't think, so they haven't learned yet my disdain for the situation they're in. I do think this is a better situation than normal to have the endless Megas defense, so at the very least, I mean... Slark and Ember Spirit both outscale anything the Dyer has, really. And are neither one of them yes. very bad in this game. Doom getting shredded. Very good uh, Gleepnir here. It's going to lead to the untimely death of Juggernaut. Doom taking a... No, 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 no! Okay. Oh, the one softball! Okay, he's got the, the reach in. That would have been... Oh, man, imagine dying to one Death Prophet auto-attack. After yeah. you jump away, I would have cried. A rough one. They're actually running back looking for him. They cannot find him. And are going to uh, elect to go to Roche instead. Thank you, First, beauties must be thanked. Which doctor has eggs. Baden has 5,000 unspent gold. Golden Dragon, please, I beg of you. There we go. He's Q to Manta. I'm pretty confident he can buy it in full. Let's find out. Yes, he can. <laughs> With 400 gold left over, can't please. Buy it, uh, well, also, bye -bye. That's true. And you never know, I mean, a bad and buyback is very good. The Doom actually coming out on the Death Prophet here. Slark very low. This is an... It's oh, gotta be. The oh my god. Slark, a bad and coming in for the back of the line there. Uses his, uh... Oh no. Oh, Slark. Oh, okay, Slark. never mind. Oh, okay, that is boy. But, uh, this push is over as Megas are in their base. Well, that's a bit awkward to say the least. You just run everybody over and then you have to turn around because, uh, 
Because the Megas, that's like the one time so far this season where it's felt like the Megas have actually done something. Radiant is impossible to actually catch out on the field at this point. I mean, you're certainly not going to want to take the 3v4. Somebody is furiously pinging this bounty room. Kenny Lavender, furiously pinning, pinging this bounty room. They lost another T4 to Creeps. Death Prophet could buy an entire BKB. At least she doesn't have the a bad ult, I guess. And uh, gonna take one more look at Roche here, probably to finish off the game. I mean, I hope to finish off the game. Like, please, you know. Has an Aghanim Scepter, which uh, could go for Jug, could go for the Death Prophet. Probably uh, both fairly equal in value there. Could also go to the Abaddon, which is probably the best one he could actually do. Just makes his ult longer, it makes it useful for people that aren't him. Death Prophet just drops her Wraith Band on the ground. Radiant scanned the wrong Roche Pit. Well, that's embarrassing. There, uh, they did not predict that uh, Dyer would start that Roche on Dyer's side. And uh, now they're going to feel slightly embarrassed when this happens. They're going to take the Ags on the DP as well as the Cheese. Uh, never mind, the Cheese is going to get tossed off to somebody else that I don't know who it went to. The Abaddon is the answer. DP Ghost making that annoying noise they do on your, uh, when you've got that eggs. What, why is the Radiant base like this right now? Looks like a bunch of trees died here. Like somebody's growing cabbage or something. Abaddon accidentally eats the cheese at full HP. Oh my god, that was a block of cheese! No, it wasn't! Abaddon eats the cheese at full health! Doom comes out on the DP. Unfortunately, uh, DP has already exoed, so guess what that does? The answer is nothing. Dragonite Aegis gets popped. Sark is still well in the fight here. Take a look at the buybacks. Radiant really does not have any. Radiant gas tank is kind of empty. And Sark... Sark had nowhere to pounce, and he's dead. He's gone. It's over. So there we go, there were some people who said Code Line was never going to win a game the whole season. And there you go. And I can't really put this all on the uh, Radiant lineup either. They were good plays, I think there were misplays as well. I think maybe the joke of this Radiant lineup in this game was that in the pool felt like he had too big of a weight on his shoulders, especially when you compared it to reality. It feels like In the Pool was trying to 1v5 this game, like he was trying to be all the fights, like he was trying to be everywhere, he was trying to do everything. As a result, there were just like a few times in the early game where he just randomly dropped like a fly for no obvious reason. There were times where uh, he really should have been farming when he was just trying to engage on a uh, on a good target and as a result for the most part it felt like uh, the pool was kind of second string in here felt like he was never in the lead it felt like he was never the biggest problem in the game felt like it was always a doom and ember spear problem and kick slide was playing cleverly i mean certainly a big improvement from his week one game we didn't see his week two but he's Ember in an okay, not great Ember game. And Doom, unfortunately, kept blowing the Doom. Didn't build the Ags either, which is weird. I don't know. feel like you can do a lot more of worth on the Doom. Just not getting the BKB, not getting the Orca. Just get the Ags and get, like, I don't know. Something else. Something that does damage would be nice, because they couldn't do any in this game. I mean, let's see how much uh, damage we do in here.
I mean, out out damaged the Juggernaut, but I mean, if you're doing less damage than an Abaddon is Doom, it's a little rough. If you're doing that much less damage than the DP, it's a little rough. If you're doing less damage than a Lich, a Witch Doctor, he's like third, fourth lowest in the game. It's a little rough. The Spirit Breaker did no damage at all. It's kind of funny. Achieved quite a bit of it. But. Yeah, I mean. The Spirit Breaker ended up being kind of food, which I mean isn't too surprising. It's a Herald 1 Spirit Breaker player. These things are going to happen, and it's not unexpected. It's not like Spirit Breaker is going to be doing that bad. Going to score like this, honestly. But. Yeah, I don't know. It felt like by the time Ember Spirit and Doom were ready to pass a baton to. Slark? Slark was not ready to take it yet. Let's see if they can recover from this in game two.